Hi there, Pastor Kathy here, Life Point Church. I am glad you're here to join us again today. 100 days of prayer, we're still pushing through. Would love to hear from other people. I know that, that God has been working in so many people out there. And I won't call out your names, whether you're at the Life Point Church or the Center Point Church, but I know God has been working, has answered prayers, and is still working on you. And I would love for you to have that courage to share that word with somebody else. So if that's something that you think you're going to want to do, you can call the office at Life Point Church. And if you're at Woodland Church, you can call Pastor Carrie or Pastor Shane, and they'll set it all up in the comfort of their own church. So that's really good. So today I'm going to talk about a word that some people, a lot of people, think that they don't have one way or the other. And I wouldn't, I would say a lot of people might think, oh, well, I don't have a lot of patience. And that may be true one way or the other. But the word I'm actually talking about is pride. Pride. That some reasons that we have pride. A man's pride will bring him down low, but a person that is humble will retain honor. That's in Proverbs 29, 23. Pride is an enemy of us. Pride is we know the right way to do it. Our way is the only way to do it. I don't have to do it that way because my way is the best. Now, pride and control are very close to each other. But you can tell the difference to a point because control means that you want to be involved in everything. Whereas pride is, I don't have to be involved in everything. You should already know who I am, is the idea of pride. Pride is an overly high opinion of yourself. It motivates you to do things that you know are not Christly, and it keeps you from doing what brings glory to God. Pride influenced Adam and Eve all the way back then. In the very beginning in the story, creation, the snake comes up and he's like, hey, you're Adam, you're Eve, God created you. Look how perfect you are. You're the best thing in the whole wide world. Well, they were the only two in the whole wide world, but that's beside the point. Don't we get a little bit, you know, compliments can do that? Take it off. You know, no one could have done this best. This was the best sermon that was ever preached. And the snake approached him to such a point that they disobeyed the Lord. And pride will make us do the same thing. Pride caused King Saul, Saul to do it to David. And there's more stories in there. The Pharisees' anger towards Jesus. Why? The Pharisees were supposed to know the law. They knew it. People bowed down to them. They went to them when they need clarity of law because the Pharisees know it all. And the Pharisees walked around like, you know, we're it. We know it all. Just ask us the question. And if you look in the New Testament, you can see where Jesus asked the questions and it made the Pharisees look bad. And when you all of a sudden are so prideful and somebody challenges that pride, you can either stand still and be angry at them or you can realize that maybe your way isn't the only way. It is relentless. Pride always wants us in there. Pride wants us to say, don't let them talk to you that way. Do they know who you are? Okay. We need to remember that what we are, we're a child. We're a child of God. We're his children. And we should be, as we've talked about already, we should be a mirror image of him. We're created to be in the image of Jesus Christ. That's what we should be projecting. Not the high and mighty or like, you know, you can't touch that type saying. And that's probably an old-fashioned saying that's out of date now. But we need to remember that our pride can get in the way of a lot of things. 
One thing is people that are prideful don't say I'm sorry because in their eyes, they never did anything wrong. When you come to Lord, you're asking him to forgive your sins. But if you're prideful, you will come, maybe go through the actions, and this is a little bit on my side of opinion, but pride will stop you from having that complete relationship with the Lord. But being humble, humble means that what's important to God is what is important to me. So it's not important that I'm recognized as a leader of the group. I will sweep the floors and clean the bathrooms. It's not important to me that I get the medals or the awards or the scholarships or anything else. What's important is I'm following God. Just remember that between pride and humble, we want to be leaning towards this side. We want to be recognized as a child of God and not a prideful person. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for, again, your patience with us. Help us to work through all the emotions and characteristics that we believe we are and help us to take the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our souls and into our minds. Help us to understand that we are your children and that we need to trust Love and obey, Lord. And then we'll be a reflection of you that'll be a positive thing and give hope to others. Help us to take away the characteristics that maybe came through our childhood, Lord, or came through our adulthood, Lord, and just be a humble servant to you. I thank you, Lord, for all you do, for the blessings that we see and the blessings that we don't. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So have a good day. Be a humble servant. Hope to see you Sunday. Both churches are open. Center Point in Woodland is open at 10 a.m. Don't forget your mask. And Life Point in Rio Linda is open at 11 a.m. Don't forget your mask. Have a great week. See you guys next time. Bye.